Hello and welcome to Flucatronic. Now today we're going to do a new instrument look at a very different kind of flute. This is a Anazita style flute. Um, some call it Anasazi. It's a little bit out of uh, fashion now. Um, but it's just from Mark Pertle and his Etsy shop is called Anasazi Dreams. This is a rim blown key of C with a secret weapon. And I'll, I'll be honest, I'm <laughs> not very good at these kind of flutes, but uh, it's, it's very interesting. So um, I want to show it to you and we'll see if we can get a sound out of it. Okay, um, spin. <laughs> sounds like that's about as good as I'm gonna get today. So you can see there, there is uh, two octaves available, and I was kind of accidentally hitting the high octave a lot there. Um, but it just takes a lot of practice to uh, get a sound with this. So I've had it a couple of weeks, and I'm getting a little more consistent on getting a sound. Getting a good sound is still a little bit elusive. But the thing I want to show you about um, about this, the um, Finger spacings, as you can see, are very comfortable. Um, so this is a good size to kind of get get acquainted with this style of flute. Um, most of the time you'll see these in wood and a lot longer, usually uh, bass A or even, even longer. And those can be really hard to play because the, the fingers start getting spread apart. And I, I had one that was a similar style, not rim blown, but um, uh, the Easy Anasazi by Stephen Ruby that I recently sold because it was just too big for me. Um, so I really like this style of tuning. Uh, it gives you a lot of um, <clears throat> a lot of options for for different scales. Um, so <laughs> I won't be able to actually show you the whole scale on this one yet. But it basically goes C D E flat E like this, and then it goes up from E to G to A. B all fingers off, and then you can usually get a second octave up to at least about the E. So that's very useful. Um, so the thing that I find um, a little bit limiting sometimes is going from that uh, E at this point up to the next note is G, right? So there's no F or F sharp really on the flute. So I was talking to Mark about, about that and said, uh, it, would it be possible to put a thumb hole on the back that would fill in the gaff there? And he said he'd never done it, but he was willing to give it a try. And that's kind of the secret weapon here. So um, try and show that. Here are the, the holes um, on the top. And then that bottom one is just about dead center in the, the gap between them. Um, which I was a little surprised. I thought it would be a little bit further south, but it's still... You can see here it's um, not bad ergonomically. It would be a little better ergonomically if the thumb hole was uh, south a little bit. Um, but what that uh, lets you do is hit that F note in the middle. So let me see if I can get that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, finally got it. <laughs> All right, so well, so you can see um, having that extra note there really help um, fill in some gaps and give you some more options. So real reason I wanted to get this this flute is because it's made of PVC, very inexpensive. Um, so I wanted to try would it just work at all and uh, give me another chance to try a rim blown flute. So I'll, I'll keep at it. Um, but the real purpose was I wanted to see if that thumb hole would work. So maybe I can talk a certain flute maker into making one of these with a fipple, not a uh, rim blown. So um, if you're listening, Brent, <laughs> you might be getting a call soon. All right, that's enough for today. If I can uh, get the hang of this good enough for a real tune or a full song, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> Thanks.